What's up, everybody? Indiscriminate Gaming bring you the first 30 of Euro Fishing Waltzy. And I just want to take a, a quick minute just to thank everybody for the views and uh, all the support I've been getting recently. I really appreciate it a lot. It means a lot to me. And uh, it's just great to see the gaming community support one another. Um, I mean, that's really kind of why I started doing this. And, and I just, I really appreciate it. I'm at 13 subscribers right now. My goal is to hit 25. Let's see if I can hit 25 by the end of the month. That'd be amazing. That'd be amazing. Um, and oh, look, <laughs> look at this guy. He looks super summer because this guy indiscriminate. But yeah, so again, just want to thank everyone. It really means a lot to me. And definitely leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up. I love hearing from you guys. And uh, if you can take three seconds to subscribe and help me reach my 25 subscribe goal, subscribers goal, I, I appreciate it. All right, so I've hooked up my PS4 controller here. Let's just do the academy. Okay, it looks like this tutorial. So I'm going to run through the tutorial. This will probably, I don't know, we'll see. This might be 30 minutes. So if the tutorial is 30 minutes, maybe I'll do a second video of 30 minutes of actual gameplay. Welcome to the Dovetail Games Fishing Academy. It's a beautiful day here at the water's edge of the observatory lake. There's a slight breeze blowing across the water and the conditions are perfect to learn the key skills you'll need to successfully catch fish no matter where you're fishing. In this first lesson, I'm going to take you through the basics of Dovetail Games Fishing. Later, we'll talk about targeting the right location, using different rigs and baits, and the tactics you can employ to set yourself up for a perfect session. Alright, graphics are not bad. The water looks really good. Before the lesson starts, have a walk around and get used to the controls. Again, I've hooked up my PS4 controller. I'm using DS Windows. Well, it looks like it's you got the hang of well. it, which is good. Otherwise, it would have been a long day. Oh, man, look at this guy's his eyes. We've got a number <laughs> of pegs on this lake for you to set up your gear. You should be able to spot a peg by looking for a sign Shambo, like this. 28. For now, let's claim this peg and get your gear ready for fishing. All right, sounds good. Let's let's check it out. I like the reflections looking good too. When you claim a peg, it's yours. No one else can fish from the same peg as long as your gear is in it. Bear in mind though, if you walk too far away and leave your peg unattended, we'll remove your equipment and allow someone else to claim. Okay, it's time to talk about your fishing tackle. Your rig and bait are just two of the tools in your arsenal to catch fish. Choosing the right rig and bait combination is essential to catching carp. When you're holding a rod, you can change your rig and bait by simply opening your inventory and choosing new ones. We'll explain how different setups work in another lesson. For now, just change your rig and bait to whatever you like the sound of. Alright, let's hit Y. Rig, braided hair rig, stiff Close rig. Close your inventory when you're happy with the tackle options you've chosen. And the white, white bread flakes. Let's do that. Sounds good. Right, you've claimed your peg and you've got your end tackle set up. Next, I'm going to talk you through how you cast in Dovetail Games Fishing. Start off by walking up to the front of the peg. When you're near the edge of the water, you should be able to open the bail arm, hold the line, and get into a casting position. Basic control, total cast control. Let's do total cast control. Let's try that. Hold, left trigger. With the line held, you want to pull the rod back until the lead is behind you. But remember, keep the line held or the bait will drop. Now with the lead behind you and your arms straight, push the rod forward. This is the action you'll need to master when performing a long... Okay, now you've had a bit of practice, let's try a proper cast. Again, pull the rod back until the lead is behind you. Now this time, when you push the rod forward, you want to release the line at the right time to get a decent cast. Have a go and see if you can cast over 15 meters. If you don't hit 15 meters on your first go, reel in and try again. Oof, eight meters. Not great. There we go, 42. 42 yards. You can gauge the bed type by feeling the vibration through the rod when the bait hits the lake bed. Knowing what you're fishing over is essential. You'll want to use rigs and baits that are better suited to the particular bed type. All right. So that's a yellow, white, and green. Green obviously is weeds. Seems like white is ro rocks. Oh, I got a fish. Push 
pushing up and down and left and right, just trying to... Reel this guy in. Ooh, lively fella. Get that net up. Not bad. I guess that's a carp. Sucking on my thumb. Top stuff. We're all done for today. In this lesson, we've shown you how to claim a peg, perform an overarm cast, and how to reel in your line. And since you've been such a good student, I'm going to give you some tackle points. You can use these to unlock new gear in the tackle shop, which you'll find on the main menu. All right. Let's see. Tackle box. Blowback rig. Chod rig. Complete with size 12 choddy hook. Ah, uh, let's wait. I like this music. Okay, what I'll I'll just blast through the Welcome back the for academy. another lesson. I know and then I guess I'll do a second video we can explore. Fish, but everyone has to start somewhere. And trust me, when you're on the bank with a fish on, you'll thank me for this. Grab your rod and let's get started. Just like before, head for a peg and unload Decent nature game. sounds. Can I run in this game? Yeah, there we go. Right trigger. Now let's talk watercraft. Take a minute and have a look at where you're fishing from. You can see there's a decent margin on the opposite side of the lake, with some overhanging trees and some reeds. An ideal place for a carp to hang out. Almost anyone can cast a rod out and wait for the occasional fish, but it requires skill and technique to catch big fish consistently. That's where watercraft comes into play. One element of watercraft is looking for the visual cues. Keep an eye out for splashing, Shows and small splashing bubbles. show. I guess is when they jump out of the water. Fish in the area, and this is oh, I guess those are targeting. feeding bubbles. Was right there, so the ripple in the water. All right. Now it looks like there's a lot of weed over there. That'll make things harder. Weed is a fish's dream and an angler's nightmare. If you're using a bottom bait and you cast into weed, your bait will be hidden and the fish won't find it easily. Okay. It can also tangle your line and help the fish escape your hook. So. When fishing over a weed bed, try using something that sits above it. A chod rig would do the job. Don't worry if you don't have one, you can just use mine for now. But I want it back at the end of the lesson. Oh, that chod rig is what I saw. There's no... Okay, well... I'll just stick with this. Oh, I guess I when you're choose ready, that. Cast out to the weeds on the far bank. Don't worry if you don't hit them first time, just reel in and try again. Although, try not to do that too often, or you might spook the fish. Alright. <laughs> oh, decent little cast there, 31 yards. Result! I'm gonna get a bit technical with you now, so pay attention. Your line is attached to a reel on your rod, and all reels are fitted with an adjustable drag system. The drag system is what sets how much resistance there is for the fish to pull line out from the reel. This game is very so technical, it it's interesting. Setting, the fish will pull the line out easily and swim further away. But if you set the drag system to its maximum, the fish won't be able to pull line from the reel at all. It's locked up and the fish is going nowhere. Let's put that into practice. All right. Tell Try me how to the drag okay, on the reel to 90%. Okay. Well, I'm not using my mouse, my mouse wheel, but it seems like the up, up on the D-pad works. 
Okay, if you had a fish on, it would find it difficult to pull line out from your reel. Bear in mind, though, when you have your drag set this high, you're adding more tension to the line, and that could lead to losing the fish. To monitor your tension, take a look at your drag system. When you have a fish on, you'll be able to see how much tension there is on the line by checking the tension gauge. Blue shows you when the tension is low, and red shows you when the tension is high. The two indicators at each end are there to show you when you're in real danger of losing the fish. You don't want to be in here, so adjust your tensions accordingly to get out of the danger zone. With that in mind, let's lower your drag to something a little easier on the fish, something like 30%. When the drag is set this low, the fish will be allowed to take the line with a little bit of resistance, but it shouldn't be enough to lose the fish. The trade-off with setting the drag too low is that the fish can easily take the line and head for things that could snag it. You really want to keep the fish away from reeds on the bank okay. and weed beds. If the fish makes it to those spots, then it might well be game over. I might now, if you're lucky enough to have a fish on and like you're reading better. it in, my advice is to keep an eye on the fish's movements and what's around it. Constantly check the tension to make sure you have enough to reel in the fish, but not too much that it escapes. Think you're ready to take on a fish? Well, yeah, let's do it. Bring it on. You've got a bite. Time to see if you've been paying attention. Start off by reeling in to tighten the line and help set the hook. But keep an eye on the tension. If you lose this fish, you'll owe me a new chod rig. Now stop reeling for a second. You don't want to add too much tension to the line. You can pull the fish in by literally pulling the rod back and then reeling in the slack line. Try it. Pull the rod back over your head. Oh, I see. So, back. See the tension on the rod? Now move the rod forward and reel in the slack line. Careful now. When there's too little tension on the line, there's a chance of the fish escaping by throwing the hook. But when there's too much tension, well, you can pretty much guess what's going to happen. New chod rig for me. Let's get this fish close to the bank so we can net it. You can move the rod to the side if you want to pull the fish in a certain direction. That's your tactic oh. for pulling fish away from weed beds and guiding the fish. Oh, sh oh. Oops. Kind of, uh... Oh my goodness. The control's going crazy right now. Quality stuff. You're almost ready to net this, this fish. Is this fish dead? Just reel it in a little closer. <laughs> Don't forget to pull the rod back and reel in the slack line to bring the fish in properly. Here we go. Make or break time. It's time to net the fish. Start off by picking up the net. That was a little buggy. A little, uh... Check it out! You've caught a yourself a, a delay beautiful there. common carp. I guess I You've fished faster than the, experience and the game points. can keep up. Let's get this little fella back in the water and we'll call it a day. And that's it. In this lesson, we've covered how to reel in a fish, how to manage your tension, and you've even bagged yourself a quality common carp. Nice one. Thanks for listening and I look forward to seeing you on the bank sometime. All right. Stalking. Right, here we are again. Now, this time, I'm going to teach you a pretty advanced technique for catching fish. Don't worry about setting your gear up on a peg, because this time, we're going stalking. Stalking is a term anglers use when they're hunting for fish close to the bank. Now, why would you do this? Well, getting a bite in the middle of the lake and playing the fish is exciting stuff, but imagine seeing the fish on the margin, eating your bait right in front of you before it belts off and you're in action. That's the very essence of stalking. It's close quarters combat fishing. <laughs> now, let's get stuck in and see if we can get CQCF, by. close quarters combat fishing, not bad. I didn't One of the best realize things fish about could stalking belt. for fish is that you aren't restricted to your peg. Be more like You're a free bolt. to walk around the lake, look for fish, and cast out to the optimum location. Give it a go. Walk up to the edge of the lake and cast out. Okay, hold left trigger. Before you cast, take a step back and think for a second. If you're fishing in the margins and you're trying to get a fish in at close range, 
You're not this rain's not bad. Massive overhead cast now, are you? Casting overhead to short distances is not the way to go. Instead, you want to change your casting stance to an underarm cast. It's a short range cast and is ideal for fishing in the margins. Performing an underarm cast is the same as an overhead cast. Just hold the line, pull the rod back, and when you're ready, push the rod forward and release the line. All right. It looks simple enough, but it's actually so pretty back. tricky. So back, so down on the, and up, down, up, okay. Have a couple of practices to get used to underarm casting. And just in case you were wondering, you can still change your stance when you're preparing to cast. For this lesson, let's keep using the underarm cast. Okay, five yards there. Oh, hold on. Ooh. I've spotted some fish over there. Quick, reel in and shift it over there before they spook. Remember, when you're fishing in the margins, you want to keep an eye on the water and see if you can spot the fish in the lake. When you see a fish, you know instantly that you want to be casting your line in that area if you want a chance of getting a bite. Look, right there. Can you see them? Oh. I'm guessing there's a few doubles yeah, over there. Close. Quick, cast your line out and hopefully one of them will take it. Oh, that was a little far. Oh, is that a bite? Ah, nice. nice one. Now it's just like before. Keep an eye on your line tension and reel your target in. There we go. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Not bad. Check that one out. Man, it looks like you picked yourself up. Seems some like more another five pounder. Tackle points. We're not ending it here, though. Let's put this one back and see if you can catch another. Five pounds, yep. You're on your own this time. I've taught you everything I can about stalking fish. So let's see if you can use those skills and catch one for yourself. All right. Well, the dude said there's like a double here, so. That didn't work out at all. Shoot. There we go. So the, the icon actually changed from a white fish to a blue Landed. fish with and disease. That's a lovely looking fish and then too. I was able to catch him. Shame it isn't a massive one, but catching these lovely looking carp is still great fun. All right. Baiting. Okay, let's get to it. Baiting with a spod is the topic Ooh, of this spod. next lesson. Spod. We had a chod rig. Now we got spod. It's a great tool to help get the fish feeding. Let's start off with the basic principle of baiting. In case you didn't know, baiting is a term anglers use when they drop free bait in an area for the fish to eat. Now, why would any angler give away his bait if there isn't a hook on it? Well, it's kind of like opening a free all-you-can-eat buffet for fish. They can't resist it. Now, just think about having a well-placed hook in the middle of that feeding frenzy. Chances are you're going to get a bite in the middle of all that mayhem. And that's baiting in a nutshell. Let's give it a try. All right. Baiting. First of all, get yourself set up on a peg, then you can equip your spot. Now, take a look at your selection of rods. Press you should be right able to see that you now have a spot direction. available. 
Just select the spot and you'll switch to it. It's that easy. Okay, this must be the, the spot. Now, let me explain what a spod is. That rocket-shaped <laughs> thing spod. on the end of your rod is the spod. Mm, it's a rocket-shaped spod. Bait, and each time you cast and it lands in the water, it's dropping its payload. Oh, that is what drop you your payload. It's basically saying to any fish in the area that the buffet is open for business. Ooh, the buffet is open for business. Give I like try. the... Oof. Cast the spod like you'd cast a normal rod. has got some energy. Try aiming it somewhere in the middle of the lake. All right. Oof. That didn't work out at all. Nope. Nope. I'm trying to get it right in the middle of the lake here. I mean, this is not the easiest. There we go. Usually you want to bait an area a couple of times, adding loads of food to the area. To consistently cast the spot at the same distance, Oh, look at that, the, the um, the, line the water clip shooter, you can see the bait. That's, allowed off the reel, that's cool. And by setting the line clip, you'll hit the same maximum distance every time. Try setting the line clip, reel in, and cast out to that exact area again. Okay, that's wide the clip. one. Hint, try to reach the line clip. To unclip, simply unset oh, the clip I guess that when worked. the spot is in the water. Job done. Now, let's switch to a hook bait and get it out there before the frenzy begins. Okay, now for the difficult bit. You need to cast your line out to the baited area without the line clip. I'm going to teach you a little technique that should help you to do that. What you want to do Holy is set yourself up to cast as far as you can. But this game is super cast, technical. That's really hold cool. Hold the line again to slow it down. This will slow the speed of the line coming off the spool and should help you to guide the rig to the same spot as your baited area. Give it a try. Do a powerful overhead cast and as you release the line, hold the line again to slow it down. All right. When you're slowing down the cast, you can also move the rod to the side to pull it in that direction. It's really handy for guiding the bait in the direction you want it to land in. I don't know that that worked. in! You landed that perfectly in the mix. It doesn't look like the feeding frenzy started yet, so I tell you what, instead of standing like a spare part with your rod in your hand waiting for a bite, you can put the rod down and give your arms a rest. Give my arms a rest. Ah, oh, isn't that better? You're probably wondering how you know if a fish takes the bait. Oh man, this guy Don't looks worry. so... You see that rest your rod is on? <laughs> Connected to that is what we call a bite alarm. When you've got a fish on, you'll know because that thing will start beeping away like there's no tomorrow. Whilst you're waiting for a bite, you could go for a wander and see if there are any fish nearby. Or you could just relax and enjoy the tranquility. I think this guy just wants to... <laughs> just wants to relax and enjoy his tranquility. Hey, there you go. Oh, buddy. Quick, get your rod and pick it up before the fish runs off with it. Go on now, you got this. I'm a little... Reel that fish I'm in. feeling a little slow. Oh, Let's launch that fish. Oh, that's another beautiful common you bagged yourself. You're getting the hang of this, aren't you? 
Well, that's all I could teach you about baiting. Let's put this one back and call it a day. All right. So not bad. I mean, this game is seemingly very intricate. Realistic? I don't know. Was, I don't really fish, so I couldn't even begin to tell you. But I feel like I'm You're already, in for a special I've already become a better fisherman. Today. I'm going to be showing you the line, my own the rig, got the cast, got the carp fishing, and that's chod, a three the rod setup. This is the most commonly used technique for carp fishing because three rods out in the water increases your chances of getting a bite. So, let's get cracking. Wait, but so what happens if like all three rods get if a bite at the same time? You're going to fish two or three rods simultaneously. You're going to need to fish from a peg, but you also need a few other things to get started. But for this lesson, you can just use my spare gear. Now, go and set yourself up on a peg. Ooh. Ooh, I got a orange. When you're a fishing pink with multiple rods, line. you'll usually start with the first rod in your arsenal. If you want to change your tackle on a certain rod, you need to be holding it first. So, as you're already holding this one, why don't you change the tackle options on it? Let's see. Braided stiff rig blowback. Ooh, blowback. Bread punch, white bread crust, white bread flakes. Bread punch. A little tip. I've cast around in this area and it's full of silt. So, try switching to a rig and bait ideal for silt beds. Okay, we'll do silt. Right, when you're Float. ready, cast out and find the so silt. So we're doing bed. a braided hair rig, which is good for silt, and we'll do a uh, bread punch, which floats. <laughs> Oops. Oh, ten yards. Okay, Perfect. we've got one rod out in the water. Now switch to your second rod and do the same thing. Just change the tackle to something that will match the bed type you're fishing on and cast out. See if I can go a little further out here. Nope, I'm in the reeds. Top stuff. We've got two rods out there now. Switch to your third rod, and this time we're not going to cast out just yet. Instead, have a wander over there with that rod. All right, I got a feeling he's going to make me do some stalking. Let's walk over and stalk. I stalk really like fish. this fishing style because it allows you to leave two rods out in the lake and to take your third one for a little stalking session. Uh oh. Oh, that's... wait a minute. Did you hear that? Quick, get back to your rod. You've got a bite. That's almost slightly annoying. Hey. Yes. Fish on. Reel that one in. Come on. Stay in control. Yeah. There you go. How oh, about that surprise one there? To another carp. The Looks like you've got yourself a lovely looking common there. It just goes to show you that the another more five you have out there, the more chance you have of catching a fish. So, let's slip this one back and call it a day. All right. Quality session, well done. In this lesson, I've shown you how you can fish with three rods at the same time, and I've also given you a nice little stalking tactic you can add to your game as well. Thanks, good job, I look forward to seeing you on the bank. Alright, and I'm at level 4 now. So that'll be the first 30 of Eurofishing Waltzy. 
Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, you know, leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up. If you can help me get to 25 subscribers, that would be awesome. It'd just be so cool. And uh, this is Indiscriminate Gaming. Don't discriminate. Share the love. Keep gaming.